Welcome to today's session. I'm thrilled to be the first one on YouTube to bring you a comprehensive explanation of DeepSeq R1. Let's dive in. DeepSeq R1 is the latest large language model designed with human-like reasoning abilities. Released just a week ago, it has already made waves in the AI community. This model is in DeepSeq's first achievement. It's built on the powerful DeepSeq V3 base which was launched just last month. What makes DeepSeq R1 stand out is its use of reinforcement learning to enhance reasoning capabilities. It's a novel approach in the field. According to its research paper, it achieves state-of-the-art results across a range of reasoning and knowledge benchmarks, and it's fully open source, which makes it even more impactful. Now let's start by exploring the foundation that powers it all, the DeepSeq V3 base. DeepSeq V3 base is a powerful mixture of experts language model. So what exactly is mixture of experts language model? Think of the model as a massive library with millions of books. When a question comes in, dense models like ChatGPT, they essentially open every book in the library to find the answer. In contrast, a mixture of experts model relies on a small specialized set of expert books specifically trained and organized to quickly and efficiently locate the right answer. This approach makes the model both more efficient and accurate. DeepSeq V3 base is truly massive with 671 billion parameters, making it one of the largest models available today. For each token, 37 billion parameters are activated, representing the small subset of specifically trained experts to generate the most accurate response. The model was pre-trained on an impressive 14.8 trillion diverse and high quality tokens, giving it a strong foundation for advanced reasoning and understanding. Let's dive into the evolution of DeepSeq Carbon. It wasn't released as a standalone model. DeepSeq actually launched two models, R10 and R1. Both leverage reinforcement learning to enhance reasoning capabilities. First, let's take a quick look at R10, the precursor to R1. R10 builds on DeepSeq V3 base as its foundation and uses GRPO as the reinforcement learning framework to enhance reasoning performance. But what exactly is GRPO and why is it important? In any reinforcement learning system, there are two key components. The first is the policy model, which decides what actions to take. The second is the critic model, which evaluates how good those actions are and helps estimate rewards. Typically, critic model is as large as the policy model, making RL models computationally expensive and difficult to train. To simplify the reinforcement learning process, DeepSeq eliminated the need for a critic model by using GRPO an approach specifically designed to streamline and improve RL training. So what exactly is GRPO? In simple terms, for every question Q, GRPO uses an old policy to generate a group of outputs O1, O2 and so on. It then evaluates how much better each answer is compared to the group's overall performance or advantage. Here's an analogy to make it clearer. Imagine a teacher dividing a class into small groups, asking all the students to write essays on the same topic. Instead of grading each student individually, the teacher evaluates the group as a whole and compares each essay within the group. The best essay in the group sets the benchmark, earning the highest advantage. The teacher's goal is for every student to improve incrementally rather than just copying the best essay. To achieve this, she limits the amount of improvement allowed within each new essay. Over time, say a year, every student makes gradual progress, ultimately developing strong essay writing skills. Now, the teacher also has a reference answer key, acting as a guide. Each student's essay is compared against the standard, ensuring that no one deviates too far from the reference while still improving steadily. This is exactly how GRPO works. Let's take a closer look at the GRPO algorithm. Now this equation might look complex, but let me break it down for you. In the first part, the expectation is calculated over all questions, not just a single question queue, and across all output groups. In second part, 
the old policy is updated by giving more weight to outputs with higher advantages. The third part, if the change in policy isn't too significant, it is applied as is. But if it is too drastic, then the change is clipped to avoid over adjustments in a single iteration. And the clipping factor here is epsilon. In the last part, KL divergence is used to ensure that the new policy doesn't deviate too far from the reference policy, preventing any major discrepancies. In simpler terms, the objective of GRPO is to improve the policy based on the most accurate outputs, to avoid drastic changes from the old policy by using a clipping factor, and to ensure that the policy doesn't stray too far away from the reference model using KL divergence. Let's get back to the R10 pipeline. So we learned that the reinforcement learning phase uses GRPO. How about the robots? DeepSeq R10 uses two types of robots. One is the accuracy reward that checks if the answer is correct, like verifying a math problem or a lead code solution using predefined test cases. The second one is the format reward. This ensures that the model formats its reasoning by placing the thought process between the think tags and encloses the answers between the answer tags. Here's an evaluation of the model. DeepSeq R10 demonstrated significant improvements in some of the benchmark evaluations. Here's another example of the performance. DeepSeq R10 showed steady improvement in performance on the AIME 2024 benchmark as it progressed through the RL training process. Let's talk about R10's self-evolution capability. This chart shows that as the model's iterations increase, the time it takes to think and reason also increases. At first glance, one might think that longer thinking time would result in slower responses, but that's not the case. For example, when solving a coding problem, you might find a brute force solution too quickly, but to come up with the most optimal one, you need to think through all possibilities. Similarly, the model taking more time to think results in better and more efficient solutions. An interesting phenomenon during R10's training is the aha moment. As the model evolves, it begins allocating more time to re-evaluate its initial approach and find better solutions. It's amazing to watch an AI model learn to think and reason like humans, slowly improving its problem-solving approach over time. This chart represents the next generation of AI where more thinking time equals more human-like reasoning, and it's truly fascinating. So R10 demonstrated self-verification, reflection on its own learning, and generating a chain of thoughts in a specific format. However, it struggled with poor readability and language mixing. While it was trying to acquire more knowledge, it was not optimized to present that knowledge effectively to the user. To solve the problems encountered, the R10 model pipeline was revised and it led to the birth of DeepSeq R1. Let's take a look at the DeepSeq R1 training pipeline. DeepSeq R1 is again built on DeepSeq V3 base, and it's given a cold start with high quality long chain of thoughts data. This training data comes from multiple sources like few shot prompting with long chain of thoughts examples, direct prompting with explicit instructions, it also uses R10's outputs that were refined for readability. And the most special part is it uses human annotated outputs to ensure clarity. This data is focused on enhancing the model's reasoning ability. After the cold start, DeepSeq R1 is trained using reinforcement learning with GRPO. During this phase, two types of rewards are employed. One based on the accuracy of results and the other on language consistency. The language consistency reward is specifically designed to address the language mixing issue observed in R10. Once the RL training converges, a checkpoint is created. From this checkpoint, the supervised fine tuning data for the next step is generated. Some of the predictions are sent to DeepSeq V3 for judgment and to obtain generative reward based on the accuracy of the predictions. This process helps refine the reasoning data where poor outputs such as language mixing or long paragraphs are filtered out. Only correct and high quality responses are kept. This is called rejection sampling. In total, around 600k reasoning related training samples are collected. For non-reasoning tasks like writing, 
factual Q&A, self-cognition and translation. They reuse parts of DeepSeq V3's SFT dataset and collect approximately 200k non-reasoning samples. In total, this results in 800k carefully selected high-quality samples. These samples are then used to perform supervised fine-tuning on the DeepSeq V3 base model for two epochs. After fine-tuning, a second reinforcement learning phase focuses on human preference Rewards are given based on helpfulness, ensuring the final summary is relevant and useful, and harmlessness, evaluating the entire response to reduce risk, bias, or harmful content. Once RL model converges, we finally get DeepSeq R1. Here's an evaluation of the R1 model. We can clearly see that the DeepSeq R1 outperforms the competition across multiple benchmarks in English, coding, math, and Chinese. DeepSeq R1 is definitely leading the way in AI performance. Finally, let's discuss the model distillation process. In this process, DeepSeq R1 serves as the teacher model, providing carefully curated training data. Using this training data, DeepSeq distills knowledge into smaller and more efficient models. Student models like Quen and Lama learn from this data during the supervised fine tuning process, ultimately resulting in distilled models that excel in math, coding, and efficiency, showing that size isn't the only factor that matters. Here's an evaluation of the distal DeepSeq R1 models. We can clearly see that DeepSeq Lama 70 billion outperforms competitors in many benchmarks. It excels in both math and coding, proving that DeepSeq's distal models are smarter, faster, and more efficient. That's a wrap for today's session. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments as your feedback will help us improve. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for our next video on Janus Pro. Thank you for watching. See you soon.